Hello and welcome to Freedom Friday, the May edition. I want to welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. Listen, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. And I'm also in a very good mood. I'll tell you the reason why. It's my birthday tomorrow. So I'm excited, but I'm always excited to um, share with you guys um, when I do these once a month. So um, I am hoping that something's kind of going, looking a little fishy here, that my Facebook page, because how I do this, of course, I use StreamYard and I stream from Facebook, both of my Facebook pages, my um, professional as well as my personal, as well as YouTube. So if someone who can text me, um, I don't see anything popping up here. This just kind of like just started. So let's just see. Hey, I'm on. Okay, great. So it did come up. So great. But anyway, glad did you guys are here tonight. I know tonight is, um, today is May 5th. It's Cinco de Mayo. So happy Cinco de Mayo for those who are celebrating. And um I always love this time of year because I celebrate Cinco de Mayo sometime on Friday and then my birthday is the next day. So it's always a good thing. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started tonight. So what we are going to be looking at here, and I'm going to shift some things around. Um, I wanted to talk tonight about genuine relationship building. And I'm going to do it from a perspective of I'm going to be talking about work as well as um, personal. Because when you think about relationship building, there are some key essentials that you need, no matter if it's just uh, professional or personal, that you actually um, need in order to build those relationships. I'm going to get a little technical, you know, in the beginning here. But nevertheless, let me move my screen over here, because if, if you guys can see my office, one day I'm going to do a live and I'm going to show you my office here. Um, let me put this up here. All right. So genuine like relationship building. Um, OK, hopefully this won't this won't come in, show too much. I look like it was about to. Come, OK. All right. We good. OK. Uh, genuine relationship building. So, you know, I was talking about is becoming more difficult in an AI world. Um, and AI is actually artificial intelligence. So, you know, just to tell you a little about what artificial intelligence, I'm going to get a def give you the definition. I am going to give you some examples as well as some advantages and disadvantages. We're kind of going to go from there. But what artificial intelligence is, is actually, it's the ability, the ability of a machine to really display human-like skills, you know, such as reasoning, um, learning, planning, and creativity. This is what artificial intelligence is. It's in almost everything we do today, any kind of, uh, any technology. So I put this here so you can see it. These are some examples. So, you know, of course we think about automatically, we think about uh, manufacturing robots, uh, smart assistants. For example, your smartphone, if you, whether you have an Android or a iPhone, I'm an I'm a Apple person. Uh, basically your whole phone is dealing is has that AI technology on it. You ever type a text and then all of a sudden it looked like it's it's called predictive text. It's it thinks it knows what you're gonna type and sometimes if you if you constantly get in a rhythm, um it will detect what you're gonna type and most time it's correct. And so that's what you call smart assist. Then another example of uh emotion I mean I'm sorry artificial intelligence, is um, proactive health care management. So you notice now within the last 10 years that you don't see too many offices now with paper charts. 
So most of that is artificial intelligence that use iPads. All your records are electronic medical records, which which is called um, EMR, um, as well as everything is done electronically now. You notice now, even on your iPhone, you can put uh, most uh, physicians or networks, Baptist, Methodist, what have you, they have their own apps. So you can sign in, you can look at your charts, you can, I mean, pretty much everything has moved and in, in uses artificial intelligence. Disease mapping, um, you know, for the medical field, this is some, you know, state of the art technology that is really, it helps. And we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages. So I would just, one thing I want you to know, I am not a, a anti artificial intelligence. Let's just get that straight first and foremost. Okay. So um, automatic financial investing. That's uh, that's another example. Virtual travel, um, booking agents, social media monitoring. This is when, you know, a part of, if, if you guys know, if you don't know, I facilitate a webinar for SCORE as well as Operation Hope. And I actually started looking into social media, like the algorithms and all the, that's artificial intelligence. So it, it, it monitors, um, it looks at your activity. It would give you an analysis. So that's all. And it, it helps me really to understand who my customers are, what their age range. I mean, it gives you a lot of different demographic information. Then you have the end team chat box, um, chat tools. So if, I hope I put that right on there. So, you know, if you, uh, I just got off a, a website and a chat box pops up, it asks me, how can I help you? You can actually pay your bills with that. It predicts, you know, what you're going to, what you need. It gives you the information. So those are some of the, uh, some of the examples of what artificial intelligence is. Now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but some of the advantages of um, artificial intelligence is, is it doesn't get tired and it doesn't wear out easily because it's a machine, right? Um, versus a human being, we, we have to rest. We have to, we have to period of time or we have to shut down in order to recuperate and so we can be healthy. Another advantage of um, artificial intelligence is um, it makes rational decision. Uh, it's a rational decision maker. It, do, it doesn't use its emotions, right? I talk about emotional intelligence, which I'm going to hit on that tonight, which is a soft skill. We all need to be emotionally intelligent, but there must be a balance because you cannot make decisions, everything out of your emotions. It, it That's not, it's not healthy, first of all. Um, to make this decisions based on your emotion. So that's an advantage of artificial intelligence, right? Applications in medical in, in the medical industry. I just talked about that, how um, technology is saving lives of people who are living longer. So another advantage is accurate decision making. Because, you know, it's 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 numbers and it's this decision is very accurate with less room for error when you use um, artificial intelligence and selfless with no breaks. Like I like I stated earlier, you know, it can go 24 seven pretty much. So those are some of the advantages of artificial intelligence. Now, some of the disadvantages, <clears throat> this is when it, you know, um, we start talking about um, it, it, you know, first of all, it's expensive. If you notice during the pandemic, um, some of the restaurant when they, you know, the shutdown and um, they actually, you know, if they could afford it, they actually use robots as waiters and they had, you know, they have a program, but the cost is, is very expensive. Another disadvantage of, of artificial intelligence, it leads to high unemployment rates because yes, this is one of the major concerns um, in the world of HR and the business world that these are taking jobs. Human beings normally are in these jobs, but you know some of the companies, the big corporations who can afford to pay the cost for, for um, artificial intelligence, 
I mean, it. you don't have to pay a machine's medical bills. And I'm not sounding heartless. I'm just giving you the facts. Um, so, yeah, they will use the technology versus hiring um, human beings. But that's a disadvantage because it's kind of like people don't have jobs. Um, another disadvantage is sometimes there's a flaw in the programming and they're in the limited programming as well. I mean, they are, they do have flaws, just like humans. We have flaws, but they all, the, the machines have flaws as well. Now, this is one of the big ones, and I'm just kind of, kind of focus on this one tonight, um, as well as there's a lack of connection. Um, human interaction and understanding. These are machines. I know they are close to it, but there's no interaction. We learn a lot about not having, being interactive during the pandemic. And I'm, I have to always go back there because truth be told, this year, this is the third year um, since 2020 when the pandemic started, I'm just now need, seeing more and more of um, things that like, workshops and conferences and summits, they're just not really starting back up this year. And um, we kind of suffered, I think, some of the ramifications, uh, and I don't want to get too far in what I'm going to talk about, was a lack of mental illness, uh, depression, all those things, because we were not, humans have, it, it's, let me just slow down. We need human interaction. I don't care how you say you don't like people. You have to have, it's not healthy to not have some form of human interaction. So this is a disadvantage of uh, artificial intelligence. Another disadvantage, it can lead to laziness. Oh, this is one of those big ones. So if you got a smartphone, I'm just giving an example. You, you program all these numbers on smartphone, right? All the your contacts. I got got thousands. Why would I need to me, need to memorize the numbers when I can just hit a button and hit the person's name and it calls them? That's laziness. And then you have different things. Um, you know, now most fast food or restaurants have apps. Will they order and use artificial intelligence? You can just sit in your car, which that came about during the pandemic because somebody bring your food. You don't have to walk. You don't have to go get it. It's just overall. But I guess what I'm going to focus on is not necessarily the physical aspect. Get, your mind becomes lazy. You don't think as much as you used to. Uh, you know, another advantage of that, if you are at a, you know, dis, no disrespect, to my younger generation. But, you know, when I was, I was taught to know how to count in my head to know how much change to get back. If I'm working, you know, in a um, fast food restaurant or fast food restaurant or what have you. And um, if the the um, POS system, point of sales, cash register go down, they're like deer in headlights. They have no idea how much money to get back because they've never been taught how to count and know how to, because you just have a machine, it does it for you. So it can create laziness. And then of course, another thing, uh, artificial intelligence, it has a form of creativity, but it lacks creativity. It's not like the human mind to you know be able we automatically by as human beings we all of us have some type of creative side to us it doesn't have that that um capacity to do that so anyway i just wanted to give you a little bit about artificial intelligence and the reason and i'm going to show you even more the reason i um i i'm i'm going this route you'll see what i'm going here all right so, oh, one, I didn't put this on here. Another form, and I'm, I'm, I'm segueing into something else. Another form of artificial intelligence is so if you've ever been on the dating app and it's, you know, it's supposedly you pull up your pro, you know, you put your profile in there and then supposedly to match you up with different people according to what you have. That's artificial intelligence. I don't know if you knew that, but that is actually AI technology as well. Okay. All right. 
So what I want to get to right now is basically talk about relationship uh, building. And I want to give you some essentials for good relationship building. I talked about, as I was talking about, you know, the advantages and disadvantages of artificial intelligence. Um, and the reason I chose this topic for um, tonight, genuine relationship building becoming more difficult in the AI world, it is because there are certain um, skills that you need if you want to effectively build relationships. And it requires human interaction. Techno like I said, AI, I'm not anti-AI. I promise you. I probably use it probably more than I should. But all honesty, this is, this is when we get ready to get into the more human side. I had to catch myself because sometimes you know, um, effective communication is are not always with a text or going through an app. There are some things that you need when you need relationship building. And first of all, um, sometimes artificial intelligence, it, you can question, you ha I have questioned, and I've actually conducted studies on its integrity and is it ethical sometimes? So, you know, you think about it. So, you know, let's just look at some of the essential building, relationship building. First is honesty, right? Being honest. Um, now, what I'm talking about now, this is just, just relationship building essentials one-on-one, -on -one, what you need. And I'll kind of hit a little bit more about um, AI and how it can really... Um, how it can really affect some of these, these essentials for good relationship building, because there has to be a balance. But being honest in relationship, um, this is either work or personal. Honesty is what helps with, it's, you know, it helps determine your character, um, you know, being truthful, being honest is very important in any type of relationship, whether you're at work, or when I say relationships, uh, personal, I'm not necessarily talking about just romantic, but it's important too, because you have to be honest. If you're trying to date, out here trying to date, you need to be honest because so many um, relationships fail before they can start because of not being honest in the beginning. So that's one of the, the one of the essentials you, in, in good relationship building. You have to be honest. You have to be, first of all, you have to be honest with yourself if truth be told, okay? So you really want to be honest with yourself and be honest with the person, or if it's just family, making sure you're honest um, with the relationship, because if you're not, if there's constant lies, and I'm, this is a point that I'm being real, real, that's going to affect um, trust. And I'm kind of skipping, but since we there, trust is, you know, being able to do what you say and say what you do and mean it. So you got to build trust. And to build trust, you have to be honest, right? And then there are certain um, communication skills, effective communication skills that you need in relationship building. And I just think this is key because this goes back to I'm um, touching on artificial intelligence. So there are three, th three components of, of effective communication. First, you need to listen, effective listening. Um, listen to your coworker, listen to your partner. Because let me tell you what happens. If you don't listen, what happens is <laughs> you will, um, when someone's communicating with you, especially depending on what kind of conversation, if it's one of those that's heated, nine times out of 10, what are we doing? We're thinking about what we're going to say. We're not thinking about, um, what the other person is saying, and we miss the whole thing. Because if you don't listen, you can miss what you needed to hear that can change your response that you're thinking of in your head. So it's very important that you listen um, to, to the persons you're speaking to. And then, you know, there's verbal, which we, you know, that's what I'm doing at verbal communication. And then there's nonverbal. Now, nonverbal, 
is what I'm talking about, basically what I'm talking about with artificial intelligence. That's that's really kind of most of the time that's a nonverbal um, tool, uh, text messages and, um, you know, the chat bot, uh, bots and different things like that. You're not really talking to anybody. You're just typing. And when you are, let me, and let me just say this, grown people into young people. Okay. If you are in a heated discussion, please don't text anybody. That's when you need to pick up the phone and go from nonverbal to verbal because you can't detect people's tones. You can't see their body language. You can't see exactly because sometimes you may put something in the text and it wasn't what they meant to say, but you may have taken it the wrong way. So that's, what, that's sometimes when you communicate, especially in relationships, people have broken up over text message and it was just like blown totally out of proportion. Or, you know, another part of AI, when you're talking about text messages, now there is the voice. You can actually leave, um, um, put the voice indicator. You can talk in it and it type out everything that you state, state right? Well, we know how that goes sometime. I've actually did that and it typed the word. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't pronounce that word that way. Well, that wasn't what I meant. Suppose you just do it and don't you hit sin, you know? So there are some things that you need to actually pick up the phone. And even better yet, how about uh, have a meeting and meet with the person? Because when you're talking about uh, relationships, when you know, dealing with misunderstandings or even at work, Get up and go to the, the person's cubicle, office, meet them. I don't care. Face-to-face -face relationship or pick up the phone and call because that's that's not a good way to build healthy relationships. It requires a phone call or it requires you to get up uh, with our lazy selves, just like I talked about artificial intelligence. Um, one of the components disadvantage of being lazy, it does make you lazy. No, you, you don't need to text or, uh, whatever. So, you know, yeah, you need to just get up and go talk to the person. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, um, one of these situations, emotion intelligence. So what is emotion intelligence? And, and if you've been on any of my lives or by the way, Back in last year, I did 21 days of uh, skilling you softly. All of these uh, 21 soft skills, including relationship building, it's on my YouTube channel. So I'm, I'm hyping my YouTube channel up right about now. So make sure you go to my YouTube channel and take a look at them. Uh, looking at this. Okay. I did adjust my camera here just a little bit. All right. So emotional intelligence is, is really um, how you handle your emotions how you handle and is also how you understand others emotions as well so there are different like five different components of emotional intelligence your self-awareness self-regulation social skills um empathy and then motivation those are the the different components of emotional intelligence yet listen this is crucial i'm even working on some books because what i'm learning is people you would think like in church or uh, certain organizations, you would think they would have a high, kind of a high level of emotional intelligence. That means, you know, being aware, self-aware. I'm telling you right now, I have met more people from church that lack emotional intelligence. So I'm actually working, I'm researching to work on a book because that's one place you definitely need to know about building relationships because you're dealing with people. People come to church and I'm not even going to get up because it's going to take me to somewhere. Out of, I don't want to go right now. And I'm, I'm working on something with that. But people in church, I'm not saying you have to walk on eggshells, but when you're dealing with people's souls and they got a lot going on and uh, may, by the way, is, is Mental Health Awareness Month. You need to be emotionally intelligent to know, determine what to say, what not to say, because you don't want to trigger someone. And I'm just, I'm just using church, but I'm just saying even at work. But, you know, you would think people from at church or religion uh, or religion organizations would have high emotional intelligence. Let me tell you right now, they don't. Not all of them do not. 
you would think they would, but they don't. So, you know, you, you definitely need emotional intelligence um, when you're talking about how to build effective relationships, right? Um, you're dating someone. I met, I mean, you know, I've been in the dating pool and then met people. They emotional intelligence, it was awful. That wasn't self-aware, um, was not, didn't know how to self-regulate, was just like, I mean, why try to watch my word? It's not motivated, it's just like talking to them, just like looking at somebody, uh, somebody the paint drying on the wall. But anyway, I digress. Um, had no social skills whatsoever and one really empathetic so you know you need to make sure you have these things and let me just say this too um women are known to be emotional beings but let me just let me let me say that's not always true either <laughs> some of my sisters no all women are not emotional beings they don't have a high level emotional intelligence it's very rare but most time you know we, we are known to be more emotional but you know you have to remember emotional intelligence is being aware being emotionally intelligent of yourself and of others right how to handle emotions so um let's just be mindful of that too because um i met some people I would thought that would, but you can't, you know, all of us have different characteristics. We have different personalities. And some people, one thing I have learned on my many years of studying soft skills is sometimes people lack, some people are more, um, have more emotional intelligence or just as the soft skills than others. But everybody has a form. You know, some may be higher than others. It's just depend on the person and also depend on, you know, what they have actually gone through in life. You know, truth be told. All right. Another um, key element that you need, the essence of a good relationship, of course, is respect. That's key. And the world we live in right now, respect has gone to hell. I'm just being honest. It really has. I'm just like what has really happened because of everything going on, we live in a world that um, people lack respect. They don't respect themselves. So how really how they're going to respect you. But that's OK. You know, I have changed my language. I know what's going on, but I am I choose to be respectful because I always say uh, Maya Angelou, she said, be the change you want to be. I have added in that if you want respect, be respectful. If you want to be loved, be loving, right? You have to be what you are looking for. Respect is an inside job. It starts within. If you don't respect yourself, it's going to be hard for you to respect someone else. Uh, that's why, you know, like I said, dating has gotten is interesting. It was already interesting before the pandemic. It's really interesting now. But anyway, and another one. I didn't have on here, but relationship building is key in networking, your networking skills. You have to have these, um, that really one part, that's not one of the essentials, but all of these are essential when you talk about networking skills, right? So you need to make sure that you know how to, um, how to network. And, you know, especially social media, like I say, you know, you, I told you my story during the pandemic, how I've got engrossed in social media. I had to, I don't, not on there like I was, I had to cut back because I have to work, right? So, but I've become kind of a um, guru when it comes to social media and studying, studying the algorithms and everything. So, you know, this is important as well. So let me move this out the way here. So, um I think I can see the rest here. Okay. So um, so all in all, this is what you need. Like I say, I am not anti-artificial uh, intelligence, but you got to have a balance. And that's when I found this. There has to be a balance, right? You can use technology to help do your job. It helps a lot. It saves me a lot of time. But also need you also need to know 
when you need to pick up the phone, go see someone, talk to them, and not be a I, I, maybe I shouldn't say this, but sometimes too. Let me tell you what this what what technology has done. It has actually made a lot of cowards. So you hide behind technology so you don't have to go talk to people, whether it's your coworkers or uh, a personal relationship, a spouse or a significant other, even your family members. Guys, they have to be a balance. It, you can choose. To do, I know sometimes technology, like I said, one of the disadvantages makes you lazy. But I believe in getting back to the basics. That's just me. I'm a firm believer. Some things, y'all, we're going to have to get back to the basics of doing. Many times, sometimes I do it on purpose. I could easily take the easy route, but I don't, right? Because one of the things, I'm just being honest, that really irritates me to the highest. Now, I'm talking business now, but. When I'm on social media, one of the biggest one, the, the, the social media uh, that I use more than any of them is my LinkedIn. Somebody, you know, creeping up, sending me messages about what they offer and this and that and other. I'm like, I don't know you. That's just me personally. Call me old school. What makes you different from anyone else? Really? There are 50 million people out here doing what you're doing. What is, you know... So the ones who've tried to, who I have some now that build relationships. It's like, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Your, your profile is very fascinating. I love what you're doing. I just want to say hi. And then every once in a while, they'll reach out and they say hi again. And then they may tell me, so this is what I do. Not pushing. I'm not pushing sales rep. Or they are saying like today, I started getting uh, early birthday wishes and LinkedIn. Some of these people I didn't really know. Some of them I kind of chatted with and I responded back. And that's another thing too. I want to talk about briefly is when we talk about social media, guys, just don't post stuff and people comment and you never go back and form. That's called relationship building when it's uh, in social media, right? I can't, someone sends me something, a comment. I either like it or comment back. And I'm telling you a trick about that too. That triggers the algorithm in your favor. Just FYI, that one was free. I'm gonna give you that one free. But yeah, um, responding back to people helps the uh, triggers the algorithm in your favor. It'll get it out there more. People will start seeing your post and everything. Um, you know, I post something last week, week for last. Oh, if you don't know. I'm so excited. I am a Gigi now. My 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 grandbaby, she is so beautiful. So I posted some pictures and, you know, people responded. I responded back. And next thing I know is like, I don't know how many hundreds, two or three hundred views or something like that. But, um, you know, and, and when I post things like that, especially on my personal page, because I don't I don't post certain things on my business page when I post on my personal page. That's relationship building, you know, that's okay. But it, going back to LinkedIn, if I don't really know you and you you creep up on my LinkedIn page sending me inbox and I don't, I'm like, okay, um, yeah. So you need to make sure you know how to balance that out, right? Make sure you know how to do that. Okay. All right. So I hope this has helped you some. I, this is not a deep, deep dive. Um, if you want a deep, deep dive, I'll, I'm going to actually just, which takes me to my next slide. Let me go to the next slide. Um, what's going on in the marketplace? So um, FYI, I posted this today. I am so excited. One of um, my previous, we were really co wasn't co-workers. We served together um, on a board, Sherm Memphis board back in 2017. And she is actually a part of this organization. I have seen it, didn't know much about it, but she introduced me to Disrupt HR. I said, yeah, that sounds like me. Because whether or not you know it, I'm a quiet person, but I don't do too well with the status quo. We're going to do this because we always been doing it, but it's not effectively helping. 
So, you know, so um, I'm going to be a part of a, if you can see the lineup here, oh my God, I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to meet some of these people myself, but I have the opportunity um, to be as one of the speaker at um, Disrupt HR Memphis. It's June the 8th. The information is here. Um, I, it's also on my social media platform. So if you haven't gotten a ticket, make sure you get a ticket to um, buy it because the I think she said the first 50 who register, you're actually going to get a free autographed book uh, from Tom Ziegler. This is Zig Ziegler's son. So hurry up and register for this. Okay. But I am so excited. I am honored. I am humbled because God has really opened up some doors for me. So I am so excited uh, to be a part of that. Now, the next thing here is I am so excited about this. I'm planning now. I'm going to actually have an in-person event. It's going to be a master class. So I'm working on a venue. Hopefully get that in the next, uh, get that locked in with the next couple of weeks. So you guys stay tuned. Um, it's a master class. I don't want to give it away, but I'm telling you, it is going to be phenomenal. Um, you're not going to, I'll just put it like this. If you're 50 plus, you don't want to miss this because um, it's going to be phenomenal. I'm going to have some special guests there. And I'm so, I'm so doggone excited. I can't hardly sit in this seat, but yeah. So that's coming. It's coming this summer. Um, mid to late summer, but um, it's in the works. So even if you're not in Memphis, um, if you want to attend, once I post it, I, you know, I'll gather some hotel information if you want to come in from out of town, but this is just how good this is going to be for my, um, gens, for my Gen Xers like me who are, who are in their fifties and for the baby boomers, I got some good information. Like I said, it's a master class. And you're going to take a lot of notes. You're going to learn a lot. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to help you put all this in action because there is time for a change. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to give it all away. OK. All right. So um, thank you guys for um, being here tonight and attending this Freedom Friday. I hope that something that I was that I said that um, that help you or put some thinking, make you put on your thinking cap or critically think here. And um, yeah, so I'm going to get ready to go in here and um, grab me a glass of wine, get on my couch. And in less than what, how many hours is it? Less than five hours. I'm going to bring my birthday in. So I'm going to be uh, celebrate all weekend, probably next week because I am so excited to to um, celebrate chapter 53. Yes, I am 53. I know I don't look 53, but anyway. <laughs> but yes, I am so gracious that I'll be uh, celebrating my 53rd birthday tomorrow, May 6th. So um, I'm excited really what's going on. So let's keep in touch. Um, I'm going to have actually have a, probably a, um, a webinar this month, a free webinar um, debating on the topic. and. Um, Email address, all things Sarita. You have my website. You can connect with me almost every social media platform. Um, you can even, if you go through my website, you could pretty much get every go, every social media platform because I have it connected. And actually, too, uh, when I post these lives, just some of you may know this, I have a YouTube channel. So you can actually go through my website and look at my uh, live through my YouTube channel because it's connected directly to my website. All right. Okay. All right. So um, you guys have a wonderful re the remainder of the evening. If you're celebrating Cinco de Mayo, don't get, don't get too twisted. Don't drink too much tequila. Okay. All right. Um, and I want to thank you guys also to, uh, for your support. Um, I, you know, newsletter, if you want to be a part of, uh, want to receive my newsletter, go to my, um, Linktree, which is Linktree from Sarita's Pen. You can actually sign up for my for my newsletter or just send me an email. You have my email address 
um, send me an email and I, and I will actually put you on my email address. Okay. Um, remember, I always say this is one of my, my famous quote, protect your peace. So when needed, your peace can protect you. And I stand firmly on that. All right. Okay, guys, have a awesome weekend. And um, I'm going to start my celebration. I hear my grandbaby crying now. So um, I'm probably going to grab her, go play with her for a minute too. All right. Have a good weekend. And I will see you next month, if not before. Bye.